ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोप कुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नम सो हरे कृष्णा दिस इवनिंग वी आर डूइंग फ्रॉम भगवत गीता फोर चैप्टर टेक्स्ट फोर्टी संशयात्मानश्यति विदाउट फेथ इन रिवील्ड स्क्रिप्चर्स च आलसो संशय ऑफ डाउट आत्म अ पर्सन विनश्यति फॉल्स बैक न never i am in this lok world asti there is na no, not parah in the next life na no, not sukham happiness samshaya doubtful atmana of the person translation and purport by his divine grace till ac vidant sanshrupati translation being ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain god consciousness they fall down for doubting soul there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next purport out of many standard and authoritative revealed scriptures the bhagavad gita is the best persons who are almost like animals have no faith in or knowledge of the standard revealed scriptures and some even though they have knowledge or can cite passages from the revealed scriptures have actually no faith in these words in these words and even though others may have faith in the scriptures like bhagavad gita they do not believe in or worship the person of god head sri krishna such persons cannot have any standard in krishna consciousness they fall down out of all the above mentioned persons those who have no faith and are always doubtful make no progress at all men without faith in god and his revealed words have find no good in this world nor in the next for them there is no happiness whatsoever one should therefore follow the principles of revealed scriptures with faith and therefore by to be raised to the platform of knowledge only this knowledge will help one become promoted to the transcendental platform of spiritual understanding in other words doubtful persons have no status whatsoever in spiritual emancipation one should therefore follow in the footsteps of great acharyas who are in the disciplic succession and thereby attain success om agyana timirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chaturullitamena tasmay sri guru namaha jai sri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda sri advaita शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो हियर टुडे वी आर रीडिंग वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्सेस फ्रॉम भगवत गीता एंड व्हाट वी सी नाउ इन दिस पार्ट ऑफ गीता सो व्हाट लॉर्ड कृष्णा एक्सप्लेन्स हां 
who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain god consciousness they fall down for the doubting soul there is no happiness neither in this world nor in the next now what we see here basically uh prophet he explains in the purport like how in the material world like people who are especially faithless how they can be of in this material world how they can follow their own whims so basically this was explains the theme is faithless cannot attain perfection of god consciousness so what prabhu explains in the purport in the beginning that bhagavad gita is the standard and authoritative revealed scripture among all the scriptures and often time prabhu quotes for kaliyuga bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam now these are the only the best scriptures also prabhu quotes in the bhagavad gita introduction one verse from gita upanishad gita su gita kartavya kim anya shastra vistare because this bhagavad gita is personally spoken by the lord himself and now here what we see prabhu is glorifying gita and we can understand uh, from a uh, materialistic point of view uh, if we want to give some example like uh, today's world you will find so many dictionaries from pocket dictionary standard dictionary medical learners a uh, collegiate encyclopedic or bilingual there are so many varieties of dictionaries so similarly uh, you will find there are scriptures and the scriptures are spoken according to time place and the general understanding of people to their according to the level of their consciousness so also we find in the school uh, the uh, from first standard to 10th standard if you see the mathematics uh, for different grades from first standard uh, if you go to the 10th standard the mathematics gradually changes so from Uh, calculation to algebra to trigonometry similarly the scriptures they are spoken according to the development of the mind of the people and one time one dude he was giving a very good example that uh, some dude is in maharashtra some place they were doing book distribution and during this book distribution this was like uh, marathon time so one person came to the bus and he was looking for prabhu gita that was in marathi presently our iskon bbd has and uh, circulated more than 50 crore prabhu books so the bhagavad gita is the third biggest selling after english hindi this marathi selling the third biggest in india so one person he took prabhu gita and <clears throat> after uh, about 3 days he came back and he told the dude is that and this is my 64th gita and my conclusion is that this is the highest the best i have never read a gita like this and henceforth i will never read any other gita so now here we can understand that the gita gives the complete knowledge and this verse basically our acharya vishnu chakravarti thakur so he has given a nice uh, this thing an analogy especially differentiation so what he explains that he explains that differentiates between faithless and the doubters he explains that krishna has mentioned three classes of people uh, who fail the first is ignorant he is called agya the second is faithless ashraddha dhana and the third is doubter samshay atma and this samshayatma he is specially being criticized and this word samshayatma comes twice so vishnath chakra thakur explains agya means he is a foolish like animal and ashraddha dana means knowledge of shastras he has but having seen the mutual disagreement of proponents of various theories he has no trust in any of them although samshay atma has faith he is swayed by doubt uh, i don't know whether this process will uh, be effective in my case so now 
uh, we'll try to see with some ideological differences in this material world. So now here we have three kinds of people. Uh, we have to, we'll try to understand uh, how these people, they are bound to bloom and how especially the third category that uh, he's the useless because uh, what he's having in this material world, again, he has to suffer in this material world. So the first is Agya. So what Prabhupada explains is as good as animal. So we can compare the human beings to be like uh, lazy. Uh, and they are confused in spirituality. They are not sure what kind of spiritual life they are leading. And the second, Ashraddha Dhana, when we, we come to philosophical understanding. So in India also you'll find there are so many philosophers. There was one philosopher by name, Charvaka. So what was his philosophy? Rinam Kritva Ghritam Pivet, Yavir Jivet, Sukam Jivet, Vashmi Bhutasya Deyasya, Kim Punam Agmano Bhavet. So this Charvak, what was his philosophy? That yes, you should live a royal life. You should always eat food cooked in ghee. And this body, one day this will be burnt. Who knows that will be born again. And we find in Chaitanya Chirpa Amrit, a similar uh, one instance. One time, Harda Sakur, he came to the house of Raghunath Das Goswami at Fulia. So at the house of Gordhan Majumdar, he was the father of uh, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami. And there, Harda Sakur, he was giving a discourse on the glories of holy name. And there was one Brahmana by name Gopal Chakra. So when Harda Sakura, he was glorifying about the holy names from Narasim Puran and many other references was quoting. So suddenly this Brahmana, what he said, what you speak, I do not accept. And he started arguing and he even criticized Harda Sakura that what you speak is if it doesn't come out true, then I'll cut your nose. So the, to make the story small, so what we see in this material world, we'll always find there will be always these three kind of people who will be always doubting. So in the Bible, there is an example given uh, like this, the skeptics, they are called doubting Thomas. Uh, like the, who refused to believe without direct personal experience. Uh, it is mentioned in the Bhagavatam. There is a reference given in Apostle Thomas who refused to believe that the resurrected Jesus had appeared in the 10 other apostles until he could see and feel the wounds received by Jesus on the cross. Also in the about two, uh, 20 years back in Europe, there was a uh, novel selling that novel was named as why do bad things happen to good people and it was written by a priest church priest his name was Harold Kushner and this fellow is like a samshya atma uh, doubting so actually exactly what happened he had one son who was 10 years old and his son he died because of one disease called progeria so this disease uh, we don't find in India, but uh, it is not so uh, common, but it's very rare. So in this disease, what happens? A person within a, within a span of 10 years, so he grows old and he becomes like from, like from five years, he becomes like 90 years within a span of 10 years and he's dead, gone. So what happened? This Harold Kushner, he was a priest in the church. So what he came to a conclusion that I am such a good person. I am doing social service. I am working for God. So how come this has happened to me that my son, uh, he died within a small span of life. So he came to a conclusion. What he understanding was that if God is all merciful, then he may not be powerful. And if he is at all powerful, then he may not be in control of all material situations of life. 
and also there are many people in the european mm, countries and all what they say yes uh, god he created this nature and what he formed it has gone beyond his control and god has left it to the material world to the people to carry it on also there was one german philosopher his name was nietzsche so often time he used to go to the church for sunday sermon and on the notice board he used to write god is dead he used to go to all the churches in the morning and he used to write like this he was a complete atheist and when prabhupad was in russia that that time prabhupad he went to meet one professor by name kotoski so one day prabhupad he asked uh, this kotoski yes i wanted to know from you so what is your understanding uh, is there life after this life do we live in another body so this fellow very blandly what he said <coughs> what he told prabhupad swami ji there is no life after this life this is the life after this life there is no life no more life so in material world what we see uh, this kind of people will be always existing it is not that they are now there they were in the past also so while prabhupad was preaching that time one of prabhupad disciple he went to sri lanka his name was hamsadutta swami and that time there was one professor by name poor and this professor what he used to do he used to book big stadiums and he used to call all the people especially buddhist and he used to tell that today i am going to prove that there is no god and he used to keep a stop watch and he used to say i to the assembly of people yes today i am going to challenge god if god is there he should come down here and he should kill me immediately so i challenge god i don't agree with god i completely deny god i don't think there is god so he used to put his uh, stop watch and he used to tell now i am giving 5 minutes for god if he is there he should come and he should kick me out from here so later on he comes to 1 minute this way and he used to say okay now 10 seconds left ah uh, 0 9 8 7 5 4 3 2 yes time is over now you see the god he didn't come if there is god he could have come here so this way uh, in material world what we see there are cat this categories of people one time one of my friend he was giving a good example so he had one friend in his college days and he was very hard core and a atheist so what happened after his graduation he opened one medical shop and what happened he called this friend my my friend for the opening of the shop and my devotee friend he went there and what he saw to his surprise his atheist friend he has put a photo of lord satyanarayan and one coconut there and some flowers other things and he was distributing some prasad so my devotee friend he was taken back and he asked yes what is this you are so much hardcore and an atheist uh, what you are doing you are refuting your philosophy so he said see my understanding is that if there is a god uh, he should not be angry with me uh, just to please the god i have done this so what we see there are people of this three categories there is one nice story it is told, told in the muslim people that in one muslim village one time a fakir came and all the people in that village they were curious to know about allah so what they told the fakir uh, <clears throat> they told this yes we want to hear from you about allah so now this fakir was curious whether these people they know about anything about allah so when he asked these people do all of you know who is allah they said yes we know very much who allah is then he said what is the point of me speaking about allah all of you know about allah so okay i am not going to speak because all of you know so my speaking will be useless so i am going so now these people they were taken back so now what they decided this time again we will call this person 
and this time no one should say that they know it's anything about allah so after some times again this fakir was visiting the, that village again the people assembled so this time again they told why don't you tell something about allah so now he asked the assembly of the people so all of you know anything about allah then people they didn't respond they said we don't don't know anything about allah so what is it if you don't know anything about allah then what is the point in speaking about allah okay i am going so after some times again they called this <coughs> fakir and this time what the villagers they decided okay half the crowd will raise hand half the crowd will keep their hand down so this time again the fakir came and again this time the people they said okay please speak something about allah so again this time he asked the same question how many of you know about allah so half the people from one side they raised the hand and the other half their hands were down so what he said okay those who know about allah they should and uh, tell those who do not know about allah okay i am now gone so now in the end this story again what happens here what we see in material world more or less what we see uh, today those people who are living in this material world more or less what we see they have no complete faith in the lord they are just living their life and this way they are pulling on with their life so in bhagavad gita krishna in 7.15 what he explains namam duskrita no mura prapadyante naradma maya prada gyana asrin bhava ashrita those miscreants who are grossly foolish uh, who are lowest among mankind whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons do not surrender unto me so here krishna explains that four kinds of people one is grossly foolish second is lovers among mankind third whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and fourth is uh, who partake of the atheistic nature of demons so these four categories krishna explains also in the ninth chapter of gita if we uh, see in this ninth chapter verse number 3 is very important verse Uh, what krishna explains arshadha dana purusha dharmasya cha parantapa aprapya mam nivartante mrityu samsara vartmani those who are not faithful in this devotional service cannot attain to me o conquer of enemies therefore they return to the path of birth and death in this material world so what we see second part of this today's words krishna is referring similar thing these people they will never be happy either in this world or neither in the next world next world doesn't mean that they will go to some heavenly planets no again they will be rotting in this material world so in ramayana there is one nice uh, story about the faith so when lord ram he killed uh, ravana and when he was uh, about to go to ayodhya so vibhishan what he told i would like to come uh, to take part in your coronation raj abhishek ceremony so lord ram he to vibhishan also a uh, few followers of vibhishan they also accompanied him and after the coronation of lord ram the associates of vibhishan they were not feeling much easy in ayodhya so what they told vibhishan that we want to go want to go back to <coughs> sri lanka so what vibhishan said okay so he went to the garden so he took one ashwatha leaf and on that he wrote the name of lord ram and he nicely covered it in a small basket and he told his associates okay now when you approach the ocean you can walk the water of the ocean will come to your knee point and you can walk very easily to lanka and these five fellows were there so they came all the way to the place uh, where they wanted to go to sri lanka and once they entered the ocean to their surprise what happened the water came to their uh, knees all of a sudden the water came to their knees and they were walking they had a good time walking in the ocean 
and they were just seeing that yes just about one or two kilometers away the lanka is being seen so now what happened one person among the five he had a doubt how uh, what power is there in this basket which is reducing the ocean to this down to this length so he became curious and he wanted to have a look what is there exactly in that basket so the person who was holding the basket what he said now you don't take don't take any risk uh, let us go on the shore then let us see what is there inside but he was very much hesitant so another two fellows they joined him and they overpowered this person who was carrying the basket and they opened the basket and what they found there was a ashwatthama leaf on which lord ram's name was written just reading that they started laughing because they were atheists although they were the associates of vibhishan so what happened all of a sudden the oceans water swelled and they got drowned so what prabhupada explains in the purport uh, what prabhupada writes we have practical experience in discharging our missionary activity that some people come and apply themselves in krishna consciousness with some hidden motive and as soon as they are economically a little well situated they give up this process and take to their old ways again <clears throat> what prabhupada explains yes people they come with hidden motives they have their own motives and though they go back further what prabhupada writes it is only by faith that one can advance in krishna consciousness as far as the development of faith is concerned one who is well versed in the literatures of devotional service and has attained the stage of firm faith is called first class person in krishna consciousness so now we should understand that what today we are speaking is about the faith so as per our scripture there are our scriptures they are standing on uh, like four pillars like a house is standing on four walls so our philosophy it is standing on four pillars uh, what are these four pillars they are austerity compassion cleanliness and faith so now in the kali yuga what we see this the three pillars almost they have vanished and only one on one pillar the material society is existing so it is mentioned that by austerity by breaking the austerities by taking intoxication the austerities they are lost by meat eating the compassion is gone by illicit sex the cleanliness is gone and by gambling the faith is gone so this way what we see in kali yuga almost all over the world still people have some faith we travel a lot uh, we eat in restaurant and so many things are done just on the basis of faith so we should understand uh, also the scriptures they give uh, various reference about the faith uh, rubbo swami he explains in nectar of the ocean aado shraddha tatha sadhu sangha tatha bhajana kriya so in the beginning faith is very much essential uh, to advance in devotional service <coughs> what rubbo swami explains aado shraddha ado in in the beginning uh, there has to be a faith so then uh, also bhakti no thakur he has written one nice book uh, sorry nice song called dalan ler geet uh, in one uh, stanza what he writes shraddha matra loye den parama anand uh, what he explains nityananda prabhu uh, in godrum dvip he has uh, opened a market place of holy name and there he is distributing the holy name just at the cost of faith only you have to have a faith and we see during the mahabharat time very few people they knew that krishna to be supreme person of godhead uh, what we see the pandavas kunti draupadi dronacharya bhishma vidura only these were few counted people and other all people what we see Duryodhana, Karna, all his colleagues—they were all uh, what we see—they were atheists. So uh, in Chaitanya Chaitanya Amrit Krishna Sarvaj Goswami he explains that Shraddha Shabda Vishwasakaya Sudhra Nishchay. 
कृष्ण भक्ति कहले सर्व कर्म कृत हो दैट वन शुड हैव व्हाट प्रोपा राइट्स हंड्रेड परसेंट फेथ दैट जस्ट बाय टेकिंग टू डू अ सर्विस एवरीथिंग विल बी टेकन केयर ऑफ लाइक देयर इज वन नाइस इंस्टेंस इन द इन द लाइफ ऑफ श्रीधर स्वामी सो श्रीधर स्वामी इट इज मेंशन दैट वन टाइम he was in a uh, he was in a room and he was thinking yes now my time has come i have to leave my home i have to take sanyas but still i am in my grass ashram uh, my wife is about to deliver so what to do so the, he was pondering in this way and what happened suddenly a small egg of a lizard it fell off from a wall and he was looking at that and gradually after some time what happened that egg it broke open and a baby lizard came out and he was very very curiously looking what what it what that baby lizard is going to do next so after some time a small tiny insect came there and this baby lizard opened the mouth and it ate that tiny insect so the sridhar swami he got one realization yes even if i leave my family somebody will take care of my family it is not that i am taking care of my family so he developed such a faith so it is mentioned that later on just by this instance he left his home family and later on it is mentioned that his wife was adopted by the king or there Uh, there is one nice example recently one devotee he shared his one nice example uh, what we see in india almost every state they worship lord krishna in some or the other form especially in maharashtra they worship krishna as pandurang vittal rukmini they call vittal rukmini and in maharashtra there is one place called pandarpur and and during the first ekadashi of chaturmas it is called dev shaini ekadashi about 10 to 12 lakh people assemble there for a pilgrimage and people they come with a palanquin of a small deities of the lord so what happens there every year the people they go in a row of like 20 years 30 years so people are going since time immemorial no one can tell exactly when this started so recently what happened there was one elderly person and from pune he was going last 40 years he was going to pandarpur so one press reporter media person so he was asking this people question so he came across this person and he asked him yes Uh, since how long you are going to this pandarpur so this elderly person he told yes i am going last 40 years without any break so this media person he was taken back and he curiously asked him yes uh, did you ever had a chance to personally meet lord pandurang so this elderly person uh, he was in a little grimic and he was little taken back so then he <coughs> gave a thought and he explained uh, he in a nice analogy he explained to this press reporter what he told see what happens he told in the dark of night in any place especially the dogs they are on guard they are guarding everything so if one dog if he happens to see a thief the that dog will bark and hearing his barking all other bark dogs they will bark now why they are barking because one of our person he has seen a thief so they are following in his footsteps so what he said okay i may not be a fortunate to meet the lord personally but our ancestors they are going and many of them they had a chance to personally uh, see the lord that uh, there is a saying uh, work in such a way that the lord will come and see you but don't try to see lord so the press reporter he was taken back 
So what was right in Bhagavad Gita 9.3? Faith is created by association with devotees. Unfortunate people, even after hearing all the evidence of the Vedic literatures from great facilities, are hesitant and cannot stay fixed in your devotional service of the Lord. Thus, faith is the most important factor for progress in Krishna consciousness. So what Prabhupada writes here is that uh, faith is the most important factor. Now, oftentimes, Prabhupada, he told his disciples that of all the regulatory principles, the chanting of these 16 malas, this is the uh, most important. That is what Prabhupada, he told his disciples often. So what Prabhupada, he explains, yes, uh, who's the worst? Those who have no faith and is always doubtful, make no progress at all. So we should understand because in today's world, uh, people, they are more or less, they are trying to kill your faith. In material world, wherever you go, uh, people are, they are hellborn. They want to make you faithless. They want to kill your faith. So what is the solution? <clears throat> what Prabhupada writes that follow the principles of revealed scriptures with faith and rise to the platform of knowledge. So now uh, what Prabhupada explains that we have to follow in the footsteps of Mahajana. So what Prabhupada explains that we have to have, have complete faith and we have to rise to the uh, platform of knowledge. Uh, once we come to that level, basically, uh, devotion service, it is not an overnight process. Uh, we uh, Gradually, we develop faith and a time will come. Uh, it may take time to different people. For one, it may take 10 years. For one, may it may take 20. Uh, it may even take for some 30, 40 years. So once we come to that, uh, faith will never be shaken up. Uh, because... Uh, what would Goswami explains? Adho Shraddha Tatha Sadhu Sangha Tatha Bhajana Kriya Tatha Anartha Nivrti After that, gradually what we see, uh, we come to the level of Bhava, then we come to the level of Prema Bhakti. So now, if you are traveling by train point, from point A to point B, uh, it is not that always you have to get down and you have to see whether I have, to, I have come to that destination. No. So you have to be patient. So also in devotion service, Rupa Goswami explains that unless one has patience, then he can't advance in devotion service. So to have patience is very, very essential. So that's why uh, we should know that one is understood to be in full knowledge whose end, every endeavor is devoid of de desire for sense gratification. He is said to be by the sages to be a worker for whom reactions of work have been burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. So Krishna explains that Yasya Sarve Samaramba Karma Sankalpa Varjita Kama Sankalpa Varjita Dhyanagni Dagda Karmanam Tamahu Panditam Buddha. That, that uh, here what Krishna explains that Jnan Agni, the fire of knowledge. So gold, we know how gold is purified. Gold is purified just by putting in the fire. So just by putting in the fire, the gold, gold doesn't get burnt. It becomes pure. So similarly, in devotional service, over a period of time, when we gradually become purified, so a time will come. So what will happen? Uh, unless we follow in the footsteps of our acharyas, what Prabhupada explains, writes, follow in the footsteps of great acharyas uh, who are in parampara and attain, attain success. So what Prabhupada is explaining that, yes, we have to follow in the footsteps of our Mahajan. So in Mahabharata, there is a nice verse, what he explains, dharmasya tattvam nito guhayam. Mahajana Enagata Sapanta. That all the uh, knowledge that Nito Bhayam, they are very secret. 
like bhagavad gita also krishna explains raj vidya raj guryam pavitram idam uttamam kritesh agam sukham and kartum avayam so what he explains uh, this knowledge is very very confidential all they can't understand so our conclusion should be yes we should be always trying to progress in devotion service uh, we should not become stagnant or we should not become re relaxed so in the bible there is one nice quote uh, it is mentioned in the bible uh, you have to be either hot or cool uh, you cannot be lukewarm so how to understand this uh, like uh, i'll explain you by just giving one example one story from akbar and birbal so there is one episode of akbar and birbal so one time akbar he put one price that any person who stays in the yamuna in the night for one night in the winter uh, he will given he will be given a uh, a big and a price for that just for staying in the yamuna cold still water for one night so one person who was very poor so he thought okay let me take a risk and he told yes i am ready to take this risk i can stay in the water so this way this person uh, he went to the yamuna one guard was put there uh, to watch whether he is staying in the water or not so what happened this uh, and a poor person somehow he survived in that cold and next day the guard he took him uh, to king akbar and what the guard he told akbar yes i agree this person was look, standing in the water up to the his neck but he was looking at one lamp and he was drawing that heat from that light from that burning lamp so but that lamp was a long distance away so what akbar he told that person see you will not get the money because you are drawing that heat from that lamp so you are not entitled for that gift so you can carry on so this poor person he was stuck so somehow he came across birbal and he told his faith what exactly happened so now birbal he studied the case and birbal he said okay i'll help you don't worry so what birbal he did he went to akbar and he told akbar that yes why don't you come to my house tomorrow i want to cook a very nice khichdi for you uh, which will completely detox your body so you can come in the afternoon around 12 o'clock i'll feed you a very nice you know, khichdi because every day you are eating very rich food uh, this khichdi will completely cure you of all the diseases so akbar was very happy to eat that khichdi so next day akbar he came in the afternoon around 12 o'clock and he told birbal yes i have come so what birbal he said okay please take your seat and now the khichdi is being cooked so what birbal he did he took three long bamboos and he tied them and he made a triangle and on the top very top uh, he put one mud pot and in the bottom about 20 feet down he put a small fire and gradually the time was going on from 12 it came to 1 then it became 2 akbar was become little curious what he told birbal yes what is happening with her khichdi now i can't fast so you tell me what is the truth why why you are denying me my khichdi so what birbal he told see i am trying my best my level best since morning i have put this khichdi for cooking but somehow it is not getting cooked now why don't you come and see what is the problem in that so Bir <laughs> akbar he told okay let me see how you are cooking your khichdi so when akbar came inside and he saw that Uh, that that mud pot was hung about 20 feet top and in the bottom there is a small fire so he started laughing and he told birbal you are so intelligent uh, how you can become a fool like this why, why you are and uh, doing all this foolishness so what birbal he told see that man 
he could draw the heat from a lamp far off uh, why not this khichdi cannot be cooked in this way so now akbar could understand yes so basically the <clears throat> purpose of this story is that uh, in devotion service we should keep advancing it is not that every time you become they are doubtful or because this material world is such because we are being always covered by people and they are always in some uh, confusion they are always confused and what we see arjuna he was also confused arjuna what we see arjuna address krishna as madhu madhu sudana madhu sudana means the killer of madhu demon uh, what robert explains in bhagavad gita this madhu demon he is and he and basically shows about the doubts within ourselves so every living entity he has a doubts even why we are doing our devotional service some of the other time will be carried away by some doubts and when arjuna he took shelter of lord krishna so krishna he guided him through the mahabharat war so here now we will come to the this thing uh, commentary by our acharyas so sridhar swami what he explains after previously describing the qualities of an aspirant for spiritual knowledge now lord krishna describes the characteristics of one who is unfit and not qualified for spiritual knowledge one who is ignorant huh, of little faith who does not follow instructions of spiritual master who doubts the teachings of the eternal vedic scripture such person has no chance for spiritual awakening and their human birth uh, human birth was all for nothing and in vain one who doubts is ruined in this life for one will have little or no success in this world and such a person will have nothing in the next life either because of not acquiring any merit in this life nor will there be any happiness for them as due to always doubting one is unable to enjoy anything and thus pleasure for them also is an impossibility so what prabhupada explains uh, this today mundane scholars uh, although they are speaking so much on bhagavad gita so they are speaking on bhagavad gita is like honey bottle prabhupada gives the example of a honey bottle so if you don't open the honey bottle and if you are just licking the honey bottle what will happen you will not be able to enjoy the honey so similarly these people who are knowledge so they will never be able to understand bhagavad gita because bhagavad gita it comes in disciplic succession what krishna explains that evam parampara praptam evam raj rishyo vidu so this knowledge comes in a parampara and this parampara is also a very much scientific because in the material world uh, the conditioned souls we are prone uh, with four defects uh, we do mistakes our senses are imperfect then uh, our senses are defective and we have a tendency to cheat so in material world also we see when prabhupada he went to the west uh, there were hundreds of editions of bhagavad gita and today what we see uh, this bhagavad gita has is it is is the selling the best selling edition uh, compared to any other edition in the material world and this gita as it is being translated in more than 90 languages so from that we can make out because there is a saying a uh, purity is the force so sridhar swami explains because those who don't have faith uh, also in bhagavad gita 18 chapter krishna explains to arjuna uh, this knowledge should not be explained those who are faithless and those who are atheistic so vishnu chakravarti thakur he explains that having spoken of this i gave the example in the beginning uh, vishnu chakravarti thakur he explains having spoken of person who was qualified with knowledge 
in this verse krishna speaks of person without qualification for knowledge that person perishes who is ignorant like an animal or who do knowing the scriptures does not believe in anything because of seeing the arguments between various factions or shraddha dhana or who do you are having faith is afflicted with doubt whether he can attain the goal among these persons ignorant faithless and doubting the doubting one is especially criticized in the last line so vishta chatrdha thakur what he explains that specially ignorant what prabhupada explains he is as good as animal a faithless means he there is no point and doubting means a person what he explains the doubting person is especially criticized in the last line why because neither even if he takes to devotion service he will be always skeptical so in that way he can't enjoy and because he he cannot perfect his devotion service and also he will not be able to enjoy in his next life this way uh, he will be completely frustrated this is regarding the person uh, who is specially uh, ashraddha dhan so uh, baldev vidya bhushan he explains that having described those qualified for knowledge and the result the lord now describes the unqualified person with the result for that person the ignorant person like the animal so here balde vidya bhushan also explains the ignorant they are like animals what we find like among the four like species of life now also we'll find especially africa if you go to south america there are so many tribes uh, they are living like animals more or less they are ignorant uh, although they believe in some higher mane <clears throat> power and uh, sometimes like they have uh, that uh, some good this thing for the sun or the ocean good regard for the sun or ocean or fire like that then with no knowledge of scriptures or person uh, who in spite of having knowledge of scriptures has no faith since he has a quarrelsome nature or the person who in spite of having faith doubts if he can attain perfection this person is destroyed this means he deviates from his own interest among these persons the one uh, who doubts is especially criticized this doubtful person does not have happiness from the gross world or the next world happiness is generated from the actions prescribed by the scriptures uh, that action is accompanied by knowledge of the individual atma uh, where is that happiness for one who has doubts about attaining the goal also we see in bhagavad gita especially chapter 2 and chapter 5 krishna explains about how to attain peace or happiness especially in the bhagavad gita chapter 5 5.29 krishna explains that yes hoktaram yadya tapsam sarva loka maheshwara tr sarva bhutanam gyantva mam shantim richati and one who knows that krishna is the sole enjoyer such a person can have uh, what peace in the material world and today what we see more or less today's material world uh, nine, what rupa explains in bhagavad gita 7.15 uh, the purpose about four kinds of people who do not surrender so what rupa explains 99.9% people they are more or less they are shudras so they are like miscreants who are grossly foolish who are lovers among mankind whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake of atheistic nature of demons do not surrender unto the lord also if we see in bhagavad gita especially 16 chapter in few verses uh, completely krishna explains about the thinking feeling willing and doing of the people of demonic nature so here from today's verse what we understand is that uh, here krishna has explained about three kinds of persons agya ashraddha dhana and samshaya atmana 
so this way uh, we try to understand these three categories of people so we'll give break to the katha over here if somebody has some question uh, they can ask the question uh, hari krishna Hare Krishna, does anyone have any questions? You can um, put up your hand, unmute and ask. Okay, no, I said, uh, okay then, no, no problem. Shri Rupa Ki. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Jai, uh, Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. 